Hi everyone, I'm Cheryl and welcome to the Sewing Room Channel and I have a beginner's sewing machine tip for you. I'm going to go over how to do a satin stitch and here's an example of three different sizes of a satin stitch. It is a decorative stitch and it's usually used in what we call applique. So let me show you a sample of applique. I like to do a lot of applique stitching on decorative towels. It's really easy to do and it just really adds a lot to a towel, especially for the kitchen. I do them for bathrooms too, but mostly the kitchen. So here is that decorative applique stitch here. So on this, this is a really basic one to do is I cut this chicken out, I cut a circle, and then applied it to the towel, and then did the stitch around it. Here's another example of applique stitching. This is a five point star. And then you can get really detailed. Here is a little chicken. Now this is more complicated. I don't recommend this if you're just getting started. So what I'm gonna do today is demonstrate how easy it is to put a, a, a heart onto some background fabric. So here is the product that I use and it's uh, sheets of paper with glue on it and it's called Light Easy Steam 2. And on the back there are complete instructions on how to do it. It's a really simple process. So here's what one of the sheets look like. On one side are grid lines, and then the other side is just plain paper. And then in between the two layers of paper is a, a thin layer of glue, and that glue is what goes on the fabric. So on this side, you would draw your design. So if I'm gonna do a heart, I would draw my heart shape on here. Then I would cut it out, but I wouldn't cut on the lines. I would go out about a quarter of an inch from the actual drawn lines and then remove the paper off of the back, put my fabric on the back here, finger press it on really good, and then go ahead and cut on your drawn lines. So then you would take that heart and you would put it on whatever background fabric you want to use and finger press it down. Then you would place a damp cloth over it and using a hot iron with steam, you hold it on maybe 10, 12 seconds and it fuses it on. And then you would let it cool off to let the glue set. Once you're ready to stitch, you take some tearaway stabilizer and you put it on the back of your applique piece, pin it down, and then at this point is where you would do your stitching. Refer to your user's manual for the correct presser foot to use. This is the presser foot that's used on my baby lock. And it's got clear plastic in there to where the needle goes down so that you can see where you're stitching. When you're doing applique stitching, it's really important that you're able to see exactly where that needle is going. Sometimes when I'm doing a more complicated design, I will use an open toe presser foot so nothing is in my way and I can see exactly where that needle is going. So you would keep the center of your presser foot right on the raw edge of your uh, piece of fabric here, no matter if it's a heart, a flower, whatever you're using. And then you go ahead and follow along there and do your stitching. Now, one of my sewing machines that I have, my Viking, has already preset widths on the machine, so I can select either the small, medium, or large. Most of your machines, you just have one size, but you can change the stitch width 
and the stitch length. So this gives you here, the settings here, gives you a narrow uh, satin stitch. Then this, the settings here would give you a medium. And then of course, this last one here is the widest one. But you can change it to any width and length that you like by using specific keys on your computer screen of your sewing machine. The type of thread you're using can be important depending on what you're making. For my kitchen towels, I don't use embroidery thread. You can, I'm not saying you can't, but I usually just use a standard polyester thread. When you're using your polyester thread, you just need a standard universal needle, and I use a size 9014. This is embroidery thread, so you need to make sure you use a needle that is for embroidery thread, and these are embroidery needles 9014. If you're not sure what needle goes with your thread, when you're in the stores where they sell the really nice threads, they're going to know and they're going to be able to help you and guide you to the right combination of needle and thread. So don't be afraid to ask. They sell the products and so they really need to know their product and they usually do. So I always ask the experts in the store what combination I need. I'm at my Baby Lock Crescendo sewing machine and here is my satin stitch right here. It's under the decorative stitch menu. And then over here, it'll tell you what press or foot they recommend you use. And then this is what the stitch looks like. If you want to change the length and the width of your stitch, you go down to here and change the width, making it larger or smaller, or changing the length. The length will make the stitches get real close together or really far apart. It just depends on the look that you want. Make sure you have your stabilizer underneath your fabric and then go ahead and place it under your presser foot. Now right now before I lower my presser foot and needle, my needle is over on the right. I can see that it's off center. It's supposed to be that way. So I know that when that needle goes down, it's going to go down on my heart shape fabric. So you want to try to center the edge of your uh, fabric right in the center of the presser foot. I'm going to lower it down and then begin sewing. Now as you go around a curve, if you need to turn your fabric a little bit, because the curve is going out towards my right, I want to make sure my needle is going down on the right. Also, you want to make sure your presser foot is lifted before you turn the fabric. And on most computerized sewing machines, there's a button you can press that will automatically make the presser foot come up every time you begin sewing. So then you would continue sewing. You want to just keep turning your fabric really, really slow all the way around. Now when you're done, you take it out of your machine and you just tear the stabilizer off of the back. Well, I hope this beginner sewing machine tip was helpful to you. If you're interested in other sewing machine tips, there will be a playlist listed below your YouTube screen in the description section. You just scroll down, click on show more, and it will expand open. I'll also have other links to some of my applique tutorials. So check those out. They're just beginner type designs. They should be pretty basic for you to get started with. Also, don't forget to follow me on Instagram and make sure you check out my Facebook page. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time and happy sewing. 
If you like the Sewing Room channel, one of the best ways to show your support is to subscribe by clicking on that red subscribe button and give this video a thumbs up. And don't forget to click on share to share this video with your friends. And make sure you click on the bell so you receive notifications for all my new videos. I'm Cheryl, this is Manny, and this is Scotty. See you next time.